That must be one of the biggest trees around here. Must be a good, I'd say, 12 foot girth at least. I've come out today and I was thinking of making a traditional Scottish bow tent the sort of travellers, the sort of gypsies would have used way back. Uh, basically it's a structure made from probably five ribs bent into bows. You do that in the, the winter time and by the by the time the spring comes, the bows should have retained their shape. And you basically use that to make a frame. And then you've got two ridge pieces that go on top. And you tie all that together. And that makes a sturdy frame to throw over a canvas tarp. And you could sort of uh, modernise it slightly with like a signal like a cowboy wagon, whereas you pull the ends in and it gathers up at the ends. And then you could put two two, uh, two end pieces on inside and maybe use one as a door and put a Dutch lacing system on it so you can close the door. The only trouble I've got is will I use it? I probably won't use it because I, I'm more into a lightweight bike camping and this structure would be quite heavy. You'd need some sort of a transport to carry it around. So for that reason I don't think I would use it. It'd be a lot of work for something you're not going to use. Uh, but from a historical point of view it would be quite good to recreate one just to see what like it was to, uh, to camp in it and maybe to live in it for a weekend. But I've not made my mind up. Uh, if I'm going to do it or not. So I'm out here thinking about it and who knows, I might make one. Okay, I've built a simple frame for the bow tent. Uh, so what would happen is you'd leave that there all winter and then come the end of April probably you would trim these trim these down and hopefully they've took shape by then and you trim them down and you'd have a flat a flat ridge piece with holes drilled in it and these would fit into it so instead of having an 8 foot one I would have a 2 just slightly long 4 foot so that the, the middle one the third one along would fit through both of the top pieces so you got four feet it overlaps this four feet and the middle one goes through the both of them just makes it easier it would make it easier to carry than a big eight foot length so that's basically what the structure would be like it's roughly about Eight foot long, eight foot long, six feet wide, and about four feet high. Now, once you've got all your bows made, your ribs, you could mark them like the first one, put one notch on it, second one, two notches, and so on, so that you put them up the same way every time. 
And that's basically it. You, you, then you throw a canvas or a, a few different canvases on it. I've got a big painter's uh, dust sheet that I could throw over that. Just I don't want to throw it over just now because it will MD pass and we'd see it a mile away. And if I want to keep this stru structure here in April, I better keep it kind of low profile. Because if the kids see it, they'll just pull it down. Uh, but that's basically the, the idea. And maybe some travellers would... Uh, they wouldn't have saved us. Maybe they wouldn't have saved the, uh, their ribs. They would just go cut new ones every time they... They found a new place. And a lot of... I think a lot of people... A lot of travellers would... They'd be stopping at the same places all the time. So they'd probably have a bit of a coppice going whereabouts the stop so they know they can get new poles so they just need to carry the canvas uh, it's like travellers used to plant uh, tom uh, potatoes uh, in certain places where they would stop or herbs like wild garlic and parsley and stuff so they could get it when they, every time they go there, they'd have, depending on the season, they would have uh, foodstuffs. But they, I'm no doubt they would have had a coppice that would just cut fresh, uh, well, they probably need to cut fresh uh, ribs when their ribs rotted away, which would eventually happen anyway. So, that is uh, the framework for the traditional Scottish bow tent. I don't know what like it would be to stay in one, but uh, you could have a wood burner in there. Small wood burner. Or some sort of a way. You'd need, well, I think they did use small wood burners they made themselves. Because a lot of them were tinsmiths and they worked with some sort of metal. So they probably made wee wood burners that were quite light and they could carry them with them. So the next step would be to throw a, a cover over it. But I'll wait to uh, see if it lasts a wee while and then I'll try that. Now uh, these two back poles some, I've seen some with three poles on it, uh, but you could put uh, as many poles there as you like, uh, or you could you, you could you don't need to use the poles. You could just have a uh, like I said, draped down like a cowboy wagon sort of thing. But they came in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I mean, that, that would be a small shelter probably for one person. They came in really big shelters. Uh, and like I say, they, were, they weren't all made the same way, but that was, that was basically one of the more popular designs for these shelters. Uh, as far as I can make out. Anyway, so if you went camping to a place regular, you could probably make a frame like that and just leave it there uh, and just take a canvas with you, some sort of cover, and use that as your bushcraft shelter, your base. Uh, because it's without a cover on it, it's pretty hard. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see it if you used the. Uh, all I can see really is the white, the white string. If you used a green or brown string, you wouldn't. See, you would, it'd be really hard to see that. Uh, you could just leave it there, and once the trees come in, uh, the, the the leaves come in, it'd be impossible to see it. And you could just bring your own cover and throw it over, and that'd be a instant shelter. So, just an idea.